the aesthetics are boring. The songs are boring. The dancing is bad. The singing is bad. Scrap it. Sorry. Sorry, I have to pause it because something is happening. Is it me? There's something weird in the mix. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's Dua's vocals. <laughs> Are y'all not hearing? Not music theory Kimberly came out, but you know I used to play cello for several years. Am I the only person hearing something that's off? I love Dua. I'm so sorry. Oh, as a Dua Lipa lover, this is so painful. I don't think that this is awful. This is not the worst thing I've ever seen by far, okay? And I do think from where she started from with regard to the stage presence and choreography and the way that she uses her body, she has come so far. But there's just something so, it's just so bland. I love that big set piece. I like her climbing over it. I see she's trying to go dark, right? Future nostalgia was very light, right? Blonde hair, light, pop, funk pop, you know, pop funk, disco. And we're trying to go dark this era. There's something about it. Dua, I'm so sorry. First of all, this song sounds like a Kylie Minogue reject song. Um, yeah. Yeah. This song sounds like a song that did not make Kylie a Kylie Minogue album. I'm sorry. Where is Dua in this? Who are you? It's a moment, baby. Is this at the top of her range? What's going on? Girl, what's going on? If you got it, baby, give it to me. They say I come and I go. Tell me all the ways you need me. I'm not here for long. Catch me or I go. Catch me or I go. Houdini. I also forgot to mention that I missed watching the entire show because while the Grammys were on that Sunday, I was at the Tina Turner musical the last day in Dallas and I loved it. It was so good. So I did not see that. That's the first time I'm ever seeing that. Mm, do a, that worries me a lot. That This whole thing worries me. <laughs> I'm a future nostalgia stan. I will always be a future nostalgia stan. I saw the future nostalgia tour on my birthday two years ago and thought it was really good. That makes me worried that the future nostalgia era was a fluke because we should assume generally if you were good during the future nostalgia era and you've had a couple of years to travel the world, tour, get better, refine your skills, refine the songwriting that this era, whatever it's going to be called, should be elevated. It should be a new level. We've regressed. And by we, I mean her. So we, we get Training Season, which is a Kylie Minogue reject song. We get Houdini, which is a song that got left off of Future Nostalgia. Very basic. She looked great. I like the dominatrix S&M inspired outfit. I like the set pieces. I like the staging. I like the use of space. But the dancing felt really weak. Really weak. And the actual choreography is pretty simple. I'm going to be honest with you. That dancing was only a, a step or two above Taylor Swift. And what I've always appreciated about Dua Lipa is she tries really hard, meaning she is committed to 
the craft, right? If people drag her, she says, oh, I'm going to go back and get better and improve. That, the singing was bad, bro. Now, that was a show opener. Isn't it funny that nobody was talking about the show opener? And by funny, I mean completely expected because that was entirely overwhelming. What is going on? I know somebody at Dua's record label is scrambling because none of that is hitting. Oh, my God. I do think Houdini is a cute song. But, okay, what's the problem with Houdini? I've been thinking about this. Houdini is a cute song. But the reason why it's not catching on, it's not connecting, is because the video was boring. The song feels overly familiar. It feels familiar in a generic way. But also, what I am missing from the two singles we have so far, Houdini and Training Season, is they feel like they could have gone to anybody. And, you know, pop music has lots of songwriters where, you know, songs get placed and dropped different places and it was over here and then it went to Britney and then it went to TLC and then it went to Rihanna or whatever. But those potentially generic Max Martin songs or whatever, they become signature because the artists inject their signature into it. I think Padam Padam is like a really cringy song, but there is something about the the cheekiness, the playfulness, the winking of Kylie and the way that she navigates her music career and her persona where it's like, only you, Kylie, only you can make that work. I don't know if Dua has any signatures and you can't make generic dance pop music if you don't have any signatures. You're not Lady Gaga. So I don't, I don't know what to do about that. Cause now we're two singles in, and she's about to release another video for training season. The official video for, I don't know, dude. Okay. Wait a second. If I was like working with Dua Lipa, what would you say? What would I say? I don't know, dude. Scrap it. I, I scrap it. I don't, I don't, I honestly do not know if this can be, scrap it. The aesthetics are boring. The songs are boring. The dancing is bad. The singing is bad. Scrap it. Sorry. Sorry. Let me see what y'all saying in the chat. Yeah, and the main pop girlies are coming, baby. Scrap it. Push it back to the fall. I was thinking at the end of Dua's performance, she gets into the thing with the big sheets of metal and it's spinning. And I was like, what does this remind me of? What does this remind me of? And I realized that it reminds me of Britney Spears' 2000 VMA performance because I'm crazy. So I just thought I would share why it reminded me of that. Jackson's a great teacher. She is. That's why the girls got to follow Janet. I want to be entertained. The gulf between what Britney gave at 20 and what Dua is giving is incredibly wide. 